This is a picture of me from Entrepreneur Magazine in the early 1990s. You can see I kind of don't look like that anymore. More than a million copies of that magazine went out, so I'm pretty sure that that was actually my photo. There's no arguing that I was fat. This picture right here is of the design on a t-shirt. That's the first thing ever to sell over the internet. I, turns out, am the first e-commerce guy. And there was a little problem with this, which you might have noticed. In addition to being an entrepreneur, I was really fat. I only ate 15 to 1800 calories a day, and I was still fat. And I thought to myself, this sucks. I don't want to be fat. I don't like it that my t-shirt has two X's in front of my size as an extra, extra large. So I worked out an hour and a half a day, six days a week. It's not that I was lazy, it's that I was fat. They don't go together. I'm actually exaggerating here. I really was only 297 pounds. I also started dating. Um, I am a computer hacker, literally. I've worked in the computer security industry and cloud computing for most of my career. I've learned how to manage big, complex systems. And the body and the world around us are both big, complex systems. So I learned how to do internet dating. Oh. This is another publicly available photo. This is my instructor photo from the University of California. My career was doing really well. I kind of made $6 million when I was 26. Very, very fortunate timing. I don't think it's because I was an amazing entrepreneur. It's because when you were in Silicon Valley at this time, if you didn't make a million dollars, it was kind of unusual. I worked out less because it's amazing how busy you get when you start growing up. I happened to cut my carbs, not ridiculously so, but I lost 50 pounds in three months. That was kind of a big deal. But then I got stuck. My stress levels went up, a lot actually, and I started getting brain fog. This is scary if you've ever had it. In fact, most people that I know have experienced it sometimes. I was getting it a lot. Most of the time, you just think, maybe I'm tired. It's very hard to know, am I working well? Am I not working well? In my case, I measured it. I literally used my computer every day to do the same task that required working memory. And what I got out of that was some days I had a score that was high, some days I had a score that was low, and I actually drew a little graph and said, something is messing with me, what could it be? So I started monitoring myself to troubleshoot what was going on, and I looked at the world around me to see what the influences were. So my conclusion was that I'm still fat, I've got 50 more pounds to lose, and I'm getting stupid too. This is exactly what they told me in seventh grade, and my worst fears were coming true. I believe that in order to monitor and manage ourselves, we need to know what's happening instead of just sort of doing things and hoping they work. So I started measuring my stress. I apologize for the ugliness of this, but this is what lab tests look like. This is a test of your ratio of adrenal hormones. And you're in an optimal performance range if you're between three and six. And this is easier to read when we blow it up. Stress, tiredness, low energy and motivation if your score is greater than 12. So after losing $6 million and working really, really hard, I kind of scored 46 when more than 12 is a problem. So now we got one big point. We know what stress can do. And if you're listening to this right now, the odds are that you have a little bit more stress than the average person because, well, this is a stressful world right now, and people who are looking to perform better are almost always a little stressed that they're not performing well enough. So we're gonna talk not just about what to eat or how to exercise, but we're gonna talk about what the nature of stress is. And stress is not good or bad, it's just a thing that our bodies do, and it affects our bodies. And we're gonna talk about how to use stress and control stress and manage stress in a way that increases your performance. I also got told before I was 30, this uh, lovely piece of information here. It says increased risk for stroke and heart attack. So this is not particularly fun. Here it is. I've been working for, oh, a long time now, 10 years, and I'm gonna die, and I think I'm eating healthy. 
it was a serious problem. In order to be able to, to do the things I was doing, I'd cut my calories, I was eating a lower fat diet, I raised my protein, I tried all the things that I thought were gonna work. <laughs> and this is the result. If you're listening to this and you, haven't, and you haven't looked at what's going on with your own blood chemistry ever, even in a normal physical, I think you owe it to yourself to get a data point. Do a test. How are you from a basic risk perspective? This is something that most people do for their cars. You go in for a 40,000 mile service, <laughs> you read the computer on your car, but are you getting this for your own body? We're at the very forefront of, of a revolution where you can use simple devices, even like your iPhone, and we'll show you how to do some of that. But you should also make sure you get a blood test because you will find things are, are, are important to know. In my case, this is my brain. I injected radioactive sugar to do a spec scan, and then I tried to pay attention. When I tried to pay attention, they found there was very little blood flow in the parts of the brain, the frontal parts of the brain that make you more human, and two pages of things about, here's what is not normal in this brain. In fact, I was what they called an interesting referral. Now, if you've ever gone to a psychiatrist and heard you're an interesting referral, it's not good news. Uh, a quote from the guy who did this work was, uh, Dave, inside your brain is total chaos. I don't even know how you're standing here in front of me. I kid you not. You, you can fast forward 10 years, I'm doing pretty well cognitively. This is the power of the techniques that I'm showing you. So you might say, why do I have a guy with brain damage on the screen in front of me right now talking to me? When this scan was taken, I was working at a startup that we sold for $600 million, and I was getting my MBA from Wharton at the same time. So this is a picture of a high performance brain with tons of stuff that could be even higher performing. Now in the studio audience, you don't know this, but I put radioactive sugar in the Bulletproof coffee this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I didn't really do that. But if we had, and you inject it anyway, then if we did the scan, none of you would have perfect brains either. And this is an example of the fact that all of us have significant capacity for cognitive improvement. We can improve the basic way blood moves in the brain and the way our cells themselves work. So you fast forward 10 years, and actually more than a quarter million now over that time, that instead of spending on cars or something, I spent on upgrading this my career's been amazing in Silicon Valley. I mentioned the MBA. I've been an angel investor. Uh, my first book came out, The Better Baby Book, about what to do before and during pregnancy, published by Wiley. Uh, very, uh, very detailed book, 1,300 references, but also accessible. I spent five years working on that book. I'm pretty grateful about that. Exercise is something that I do about once a week, except I'm on an airplane a lot, so sometimes I skip a week. But I'm happy that I'm 40 and I look like I do with minimal exercise. I'm not saying you shouldn't do more. I'm not saying that movement is bad for you. I'm just saying that if you want to actually <laughs> get the most benefit in the least amount of time, you can get this amount of benefit in that amount of time. And that's kind of a cool thing. I went two years on five hours of sleep or less per night while monitoring myself to see if I could find some problems that it caused. And at the end of it, my 24-hour cardiac monitoring showed no problems in my autonomic nervous system. And the conclusion there is you can teach yourself to sleep more efficiently. Also, my nutrition is pretty highly optimized. It's there for my performance. It's there to turn off food cravings. They're one of my pet peeves because I had such strong food cravings for so much of my life. When you really, really learn the basic reasons you have food cravings, you can stop them and you stop wasting willpower on them. We've learned, and you'll hear about more details on this later in the course, that your willpower is something that is limited. There's only so much you have per day, no matter how strong you are, no matter how much you want it, you have an amount of it that you can run out of. If you waste your willpower on food cravings, then you're not using it on things that are much more important, like your family, or your career, or something else in your health, or your friends. There's lots of places you can apply your will. Applying it to basic biological functions, not worth the, not worth the trouble. I've raised my IQ by more than 20 points. My anti-aging physician, who I've worked with for more than 10 years, 
says my risk is as low as it gets. My HDL, the protective good cholesterol, is higher than men are supposed to be able to have. So the kind of nutrition we're talking about here, it's counterintuitive. Things like egg yolks, things like coconut oil and butter, those have moved me from stroke heart attack land before 30 to looks like this without a lot of effort and risk profile is good.